a shark had pretty teeth. So last week, Mark tried to show us some life skills, but we didn't get very far. So we're taking part two of your masterclass today, which I'm very excited about. <laughs> uh, what are you going to teach us to do today, Mark? Right, I'm going to teach you how to use a sharp knife and chop. Cool. Can I just say something before we start? No, you we can't. We talked too much last time and the director told us off. <laughs> yes. Got to be quiet and listen. But also, you're taking notes, Mike. What a teacher's pet. Well, at every good work conference I go to, I always take notes <laughs> and then never look at them again. Okay, Mark, what are you Right, so, do, so we're going to start off with uh, some nice schools. So we're going to do a cut known as Julienne. Yes. So I've just got a carrot there and I've just squared it off just so it doesn't it. rock okay. on the oh. on the on the um, on the board and you can get these nice thin strips. So you can do this on a mandolin if you want. Okay. That's actually really clever to make your carrot square. I hadn't even thought about that. Well then it's not round and it just makes it a lot easier. And yeah. then you're just going to go the whole length of what you've cut of the rectangle and you're just going to chop it and you get these like little strips. That is awesome. So this is oh. so this is a julienne. Okay so square it off. Yeah. It helps with your yeah, and then that's, that's quite sensible. And then if you want a brumoise you do a, ju a julienne. A, a, a brumoise. Wow. A brumoise, okay. Uh, and then you get your, your little matchsticks and then you just go across and that's a really fine dice. You make oh. this all look okay. so easy though Doesn't and I know it's not because I'd be taking up pieces of my nail. No, well, <laughs> so, so what you can see is you've got your you, you've got your fingertips there and you're tucking them back so you sort of your bottoms of your fingers are yeah. way back from the knife and you're using this part of the um, finger yeah. to just guide the knife and you pretty much to get a really fine cut you want to just cut in the same place and just gradually move those fingers back mm -hmm. and it will just guide it back and you can see when you cut you're rocking so your knife never leaves the board so you're sort of going up on your tip and then you're pushing down and you're cutting around here and then you're going pulling back going back on your tip again That's so you're doing dance. a whole uh, motion yeah so your knife's never you know it's never going off watch out dancing with the stars it's dancing with knives <laughs> it sounds a lot like a reality <laughs> show. And Mal, you'll be first eliminated. Right, so, so the, so <laughs> you'll be the gilder of that show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, and then so then you can do the same. So we're going to use we're gonna, still doing that motion, but we're lifting the whole knife off now. Okay. And then we're still guiding it, and you're going a little bit faster and a little bit faster, and we're getting nice, some really nice fine slices. So you should feel the back of the knife rubbing against your finger. Yeah, okay. yeah, ever so slightly. But you want to make sure that you don't want to go up here because then it goes off guide. And, and that will be bad. Your fingers, yeah. uh, it's quite mesmerising watching you cut, cut things. We could just do a whole show of you cutting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, it could. It'd be very boring. Oh, and then, charge. and then we've got our um, onion again. Yes. So I showed you this last week. Yep. So um, you know, take the top off. Cut a little bit of the root off, but you're still leaving the actual root intact. You know, okay, you're just taking cool. the scraggly bits off. And that helps keep it together? Yeah. Peel it, cut it in half so you've got a nice flat surface. Mm -hmm. And the root's on there so it keeps it together. And then you want to do some nice slices. So if you're not going all the way to the end, you're sort of just leaving about that much of the root intact. And then you can okay. you know, you know, throw it up and it's not Mike's going anywhere. Mike's fake writing notes now. <laughs> He's not really writing notes. He's just drawing a picture. I've put, don't go to end when, don't cut end when, no, I see I am, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then you're cutting across and then, Oh, I see that's you know, going, going down and then so so the, the more gap you leave between your slices, the bigger your dice will be, you know, if you're doing rough dices. Um, tomatoes, you Ooh, know, just cut it in half, knife. you know, you do it into six and you've got a big dice there, you know, if, you, if you're working uh, with tomatoes. Okay, so utilise the flat part. Yeah, yeah, always have a flat part, you know, so okay. I've got a, got a lettuce, cut it in half, make sure you've got a flat part like that and then if you're doing slices like that, this is called a chiffon ah. arm. You know, you okay, get this good. nice sort of... How is that different to a julienne? Well, it's just a bit bigger, and okay. it's lettuce. Oh, okay. Right. You know, and then, uh, and then, yeah, and then you've got your, you've got your parsley here. Right. So what you want to do this? Well, because I struggle with parsley. Yeah. So any herb, what you're going to chop, especially parsley or thyme or anything like that, you know, scrunch it up. Yeah. And then just sort of roughly go through it, but just obviously keep your fingers out of the way. And then you know you go through it once or twice, so it sort of breaks it down a little bit. And then what you want to do is you put your fingers on the edge of the board. Yeah. And then you just chop in like that, and you just keep doing that over it, over it, over it. So you need a really sharp knife, and after a, a minute or two, you know you get a really, really fine, um, finely chopped parsley. Or oh, you can stick it in the blender or the food processor. <laughs> Based on the oohs and ahs I'm hearing from the control room, there's clearly a lot of people that have had years of experience cooking and have not been doing it right. It's therapeutic though, isn't it? It's like really, really mesmerising what you do that. Hey, that's great. I love um, it. Yeah, thank that you. is awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mark. Mm. We appreciate it. We didn't even touch yeah. anything. Did you notice that, Director Glenn? <laughs> uh, now, will we keep practising during the break, which is very short, so likely we won't have us master any of these skills at all. That's right.